The Mandalorian is back for season two. Let's break down all the Easter eggs and Star Wars references you may have missed from the season premiere. The wait is over. The Mandalorian season two premiere has arrived on Disney+. Plus. That means more of the child, AKA Baby Yoda. Let's get a quick montage of our favorite little guy. Of course, there's also the story of Din Djarin, aka Mando, traveling through the galaxy in attempt to return his young companion home, and the shenanigans they get themselves into along the way. In the new episode, Mando and the child wind up back on Tatooine in search of another Mandalorian, and they wind up in the middle of a conflict between the citizens of a small settlement and Tusken Raiders that they tend to war with, and the massive beast trying to eat them all. There are also a number of Easter eggs and callbacks to all corners of Star Wars lore to find. Here are all the references from Chapter 9, The Marshal. One of the first shots of season two finds Mando and the child walking through a city at night, past walls covered in graffiti. Among the images spray-painted are stormtrooper helmets that have been crossed out. While the Empire was defeated in Return of the Jedi, there is still clearly no love lost. Gor Koresh is the Abyssin that Mondo asks for information, and he's played by guest star John Leguizamo. Abyssins are a species native to Biss, recognizable by having a single eye and green skin. The first appearance of an Abyssin was Mayo, seen at the cantina in Mos Eisley in A New Hope when Luke and Obi-Wan first met Han and Chewie. Mando takes the child to a space fight club to get information on where to find the other Mandalorians. In the ring, two Gamorreans are duking it out. These green-skinned, pig-like creatures first appeared in Return of the Jedi. The bouncer outside of the fight venue was a Twi'lek. That species also first appeared in Return of the Jedi. In this scene, Mando fights a Zabrak. While the species first appeared in The Phantom Menace, Darth Maul was a Dathomirian Zabrak, we also saw a few in Season 1, working as bounty hunters and fighting against Cara Dune. Leguizamo's character says, I swear it by the Gatra. Gatra means family or clan. For example, in Star Wars canon, the droid Gatra were a group that fought for droid rights. They've been mentioned in a number of Star Wars books and made their first appearance in the 2018 young adult novel Most Wanted. It's easy to love a Bantha. A number of the massive hairy horn species pop up in Chapter 9, some meeting a less than happy end. They first appeared in A New Hope. Amy Sedaris reprises her role as Peli Moto. She was first seen in Chapter 5, The Gunslinger. This comedic actress is best known for her role as Jerry Blank on Comedy Central's Strangers with Candy. Additionally, she appeared on Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt and Bojack Horseman. Peli's droids are also back, including her dumb series Pit Droids, an R5 Astromech droid, and a Gonk Power Droid. Mos Espa, which gets a quick mention, is a spaceport settlement that first appeared in The Phantom Menace. This is where we first met Anakin Skywalker as a child. The Boonta Eve classic pod race that Anakin won took place at the Mos Espa Grand Arena. Mando's journey in this episode takes him to Mos Pelgo, a town on Tatooine that was first introduced in the Knights of the Eternal Throne expansion pack for the video game Star Wars The Old Republic. This is the first time it's actually been seen, though, as the game simply gives a small amount of information about it. Once Mando gets to Mos Pelgo, he meets Marshal Cobb Vanth, who also happens to be wearing some armor we'll discuss next. Vanth is the law in Mos Pelgo and is played by none other than Timothy Oliphant, who also played law enforcement officers in the Western TV shows Deadwood and Justified. As for the character, Vanth was first introduced in the novel Aftermath, in which he was a sheriff on Tatooine. If the Mandalorian armor Vanth is wearing looks familiar, it's because it's Boba Fett's. The color scheme, chest plate insignia, and shoulder plates are the same. At least, that's our running theory, given what happens later in the episode. Boba Fett was last seen on Tatooine in Return of the Jedi, so it's definitely possible it's his armor. And maybe Maybe the cloned bounty hunter himself could still be there. Crate dragons are huge carnivorous reptiles native to Tatooine, which are hunted for pearls found inside their bodies as we see in this episode. We glimpse the skeleton of a much smaller one in A New Hope. Also in A New Hope, Obi-Wan does a crate dragon call to scare away some Tusken Raiders. Boba Fett's old armor might not be the only item from Star Wars history that the Marshal has acquired. When we see him riding with Mando's speeder bike, it looks like he's piloting a slightly modified engine from Anakin's yellow pod racer first seen in The Phantom Menace. In a flashback, Cobb Vanth stole a Camtono full of Silicax crystals. In Season 1, the client gave Mando a Camtono of Beskar as payment. A Camtono is a small safe, as seen carried by Wilro Hood, the guy running across Cloud City with what looks like an ice cream maker in Empire. In real life, the prop is a model of an ice cream maker. In the same flashback, we also see patrons in a bar watching the Death Star being destroyed by a hologram. In the same flashback, Vanth is saved in the desert by a sand crawler full of Jawas. They give him water to save him from hydration. They also trade him the Cantona of Silicax crystals for Boba Fett's old and rusted armor. Thanks to Mandos being fluent Tuscan, which he does a lot in this episode, a peace is brokered between the people of Mos Pelgo and the Tuscan Raiders, with which they've been at odds with for a long time. By the end of the episode, it looks like the peace will last too, given that they work together to defeat the Great Dragon. 
We learned the fate of an important Star Wars antagonist in this episode, the infamous Sarlacc from the original trilogy. Apparently the crate Dragon ate it. There's always bigger fish. Dank Ferric. This isn't the first time the phrase Dank Ferric has come up on The Mandalorian. It was also said in the first episode of season one. Dank Ferric, that was close! And no, we still don't know for certain what it means. The episode's final shot lingers on one of Tatooine's most iconic features beyond the multitude of sand and the hives of scum and villainy, its beautiful dual suns. Don't feel bad if you didn't connect this right away, since previously we've never technically seen Boba Fett without his armor before as an adult. However, this actor is Tamora Morrison, who played Jango Fett in Star Wars Episode II, Attack of the Clones. He was previously rumored to be making an appearance in The Mandalorian Season 2. Since Jango Fett is definitely dead and was beheaded by Mace Windu, it's safe to assume that this is Boba Fett, who after all was a clone of Jango in the first place. What did you think of the season premiere? Let us know in the comments below and subscribe for more Mandalorian videos.